from Marcel the Brigadier. And every single fan in here, thanks. Your time of fighters are always the best. Thank you very much. And also the UFC, thanks. Now, Terry, you, you've had several fights in the UFC now. You're moving up in competition. Your, your performances are excellent. How long do you think you'd like to, to uh, wait before you get uh, a shot at the upper echelon of the division? Ian, at the moment, I'm just going to take each fight as it comes, you know. Keep on winning fights and moving up the ladder and uh, see what happens in the future. Congratulations. Terry Adams, ladies and gentlemen. Terry Adams showcasing his spectacular and pinpoint accuracy with the kicks here tonight in London. That fight is right now as we get set for what could be the fight of the night in the welterweight division as the Brit. Dan the Outlaw Hardy fights here on his home turf again. Charismatic, ultra dangerous. He will need to be dialed in tonight if he does hope, though, to take out Rory Markham. This is going to be a, a knockout fight. I'm, I'm sure of that. In this fight, I want to create the opportunity to, to get another finish under my belt. Finish the fight emphatically. I want to be putting him to sleep by hitting him clean on his chin and putting him right on the canvas. I've knocked many opponents out. I have 16-4, all TKOs and submissions. I will continue to knock or, or finish the fight. No decisions. He's got to turn this fight into a brawl to have any success in it. I'm planning on making a real mess of it. At the end of the fight, people are going to look at Roy Markham's face and they're going to go, that guy needs some time off. That guy needs to reassess whether he's, he's right for this sport. I feel like I'm coming into a foreigner's land as a gladiator, and I'm going to go out there and attack and come out of there with the win. The British are, are resilient, particularly when they're defending their island, and, and that's kind of how I feel. I just don't see how he thinks he's going to fly over here from, from America, land here, beat me up, and then fly home again. That's, that's not happening. It's not going that way. I know that this, this fight is mine, and I know that I'm destined to win. Bringing in a little of his own heritage. Born in Chicago, now training in the MFS Elite Camp in Bettendorf, Iowa. 16 wins in his mixed martial arts career. Rory Markham. Rory Markham, I remember years ago when we were at the UFC at the Hard Rock in Vegas, I was introduced to Rory Markham by Pat Militich. He said to me, this kid, keep an eye on him. This kid is going to be something special. Big 170 pounder, he's a very strong guy, knockout power, and he puts himself in the line of danger. He's been stopped several times himself, but one of the reasons why he's been stopped is because he's got such an exciting style, because he attacks, because he's so aggressive. It's what makes him dangerous, and it's what puts him in danger. That being said, Joe, that's why he has not gone the distance in his 20 pro fights, as I mentioned. He's never even seen round three. 16 wins, 10 of those by knockout or TKO. He talked about the Wednesdays, the sparring days in Bettendorf, Iowa, trading and trading violently because they don't let off of each other when they go after things. And we saw evidence of that training and that attitude in his UFC debut at the Pearl back in Las Vegas and that head kick knockout of the night against Brody Barber. He's also got TKO wins, UFC um, veterans, Brad Blackburn, Pat Healy, and Keith Wininski. So he, he's a tough guy. He's knocked out Mike Pyle. He's got vicious, vicious power, and he's got a lot of confidence in it. Rory Markham will be public enemy number one, though, here tonight.
again, the outlaw Hardy. Just 26 years old, Joe, but he already has 20 wins in his mixed martial arts career. He said he's in way better shape tonight than he was in his debut in Birmingham at UFC 89, a split decision victory over Akihiro Gono. He comes initially from a Taekwondo background, moved from that to Muay Thai, and he really has excellent strikes because of that. He incorporates a lot of the Taekwondo techniques, like he uses a front leg side kick to his advantage, and he has worked extensively over the past few years on his jiu-jitsu under Eddie Bravo. He is now a blue belt. I've had the opportunity to train with him. He's a very strong guy, very difficult to hold down. He's got good submissions of his own, but make no mistake about it, his strength is his stand-up. Dan Hardy, next to the Harley-Davidson prep point. Stitch making the final preparations for Hardy to go into battle. Gono's so elusive and so hard to find his timing against. Dan Hardy talked about that post-fight. He won't have any trouble with Rory Markham being the same type of fighter tonight because, as you said, Markham is very reckless, very aggressive, almost sometimes to a fault. So Hardy and Markham could truly go toe-to-toe -to -toe and put on a heck of a show for the fans here in London. Yeah, I can't imagine Rory Markham fighting an elusive fight. He's aggressive, and that makes for a great fight with a guy like Dan Hardy. If he does, it'll be the first time. Well, you never know, man. I've heard rumors that Dan Hardy wants to take Rory down and submit him. <laughs> Our tale of the tape for this welterweight fight is brought to you by Bud Light with just the right taste that never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. Both the Brit and the American are 26 years old. One inch taller is the Brit. He will have a three inch reach advantage. Both weighed in at 12.1 stone. With the official introductions of this welterweight battle, once again, the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this UFC bout is sponsored by Tap Out an expression of combat known worldwide, now available at tapout.com. Zenergy, powered by Zions, the great tasting, sugar-free, premium energy drink, and the only motorcycles worthy of being in the octagon, Harley Davidson. And now, three rounds in the UFC welterweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 16 wins with four losses. Standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, 12.1 stone. Fighting out of Benton, Dorf, Iowa, USA, Rory Markham! And now, introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist holding a professional record of 20 wins, six losses, and one no contest. He stands six feet tall, weighing in at 170 pounds, 12.1 stone. Fighting out of Nottingham, England! Dan, the outlaw, Hardy! And when the action begins, our referee in charge of this contest is Kevin Bohall. Okay, you've both been given your rules. Obey my commands at all times. Defend yourself at all times. And if I tell you to break, break clean. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Do you understand? Tap gloves, come out fighting. Dan Hardy. Rory Markham. Both 26 years old. Both looking to move up the ladder at 170 pounds. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's fight. We saw how violent the striking of Rory Markham can be. Dan Hardy puts together great combinations. Hardy in the red trunks, Markham in the black trunks. An interesting thing about the, the Markham uh, Brody Farber fight was that Rory was getting tagged in that fight. Big time. He got hit quite a few times. Brody Farber is a very talented striker himself. And uh, Rory showed some great resiliency and a great, very good grasping of the opportunity. Brody Farber made a mistake. He came in with his hands down and just got leveled. You can see Rory really trying to pay attention to his head work early, moving that head around. Rory is already bleeding from the nose, Mike. 
That was that first exchange. You could hear it. Yeah, I mean, it's bleeding and dripping out of there. Hardy, good footwork, staying on those angles. Markham trying to push forward. So much for taking him down. <laughs> Man, so much indeed. Rory Markham still does not know what's going on. Pat Militich is, is helping him, but Rory's out of it. He has no idea what's going on. Dan Hardy promised to showcase his true skills tonight. Man, did he ever. Fight replay brought to you by the only motorcycles worthy of being in the octagon, Harley Davidson. Take a look at this counter. Look at this. Big. And here's the finish right here. And the referee mercifully jumps in just in time. Look at this beautiful counter. Bam! Just rolled over that left hook, and this is all unnecessary. Rory was already out. Huge, huge victory for Dan Hardy. A great moment for the Brit. Winning very quickly by knockout tonight. Here is Bruce Buffer with the decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Kevin Mulhall has called a stop to this contest at one minute, nine seconds of the very first round. Declaring the winner by knockout, Dan the Outlaw Hardy. 69 seconds, here's Joe. All right, I'm here with a very happy Dan the Outlaw Hardy. First of all, Dan, what, what have you got to say about that? That was just outstanding. No punching power, apparently, ladies and gentlemen. No punching power. Huh? What do we think about that? Is that something he had said in the pre-fight that you didn't have any punching power? Yeah, I mean, Roy Markham, you know, he's a powerful puncher and he's a good scrapper and he's known for his punching power. And to be honest, I'm not necessarily known for that. So uh, it was time to demonstrate and represent for the UK. Demonstrate you did. Take a look at the big screen and, and have a look at it yourself and enjoy your handiwork. Beautiful counter left hook here. Yeah, I, I could see he, he commits a lot of his weight because he's a very aggressive fighter. And as he stepped in with that punch, I knew he'd be wide open. And poo, there it is. Well, Dan Hardy, two fights in the UFC over two very tough guys in Gono and Roy Markham. Two beautiful victories. you got to be happy with your progress. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I'm really happy with that. I just want to say thank you to all the fans. No matter where I am in England, no matter where I am in the world, England's in my heart. Thank you for the support. Dan! their own, perhaps the next big MMA star here in England, Dan the Outlaw Hardy, victorious impressively by knockout here tonight at the O2 Arena. In absolutely thrilled with the victory for Hardy, and earlier tonight, they were entertained by a Swede. Coming off what he calls the best training camp of his UFC career, the Swede, Per Eklund, looks to impress like never before against newcomer Evan Dunham. Unbeaten in seven professional fights, with five of those wins coming by submission, rising star Evan Dunham comes to the octagon with loads of talent and a determination to finish any opponent in his way. Fresh off an impressive win in January, the Oregon native is chomping at the bit to begin his UFC career tonight. What makes me different from all the other fighters is that I'm out there to finish a fight any way I possibly can. I'm not just there to submit somebody or knock somebody out. I'm there to break the opponent down. A pioneer of mixed martial arts in Sweden, Per Eklund has won five of his last six bouts, but the most important victory of his seven-year career undoubtedly came last October when he submitted Francis Sammy Schiavo in the third round at UFC 89. 
Now even more motivated for excellence, following his first Octagon win, the submission specialist hopes the next victim is Evan Dunham tonight. I'm gonna come after him and uh, I hope he's ready, cause I am. I gotta destroy him. Coming up next, Evan Dunham takes on Pear Eklund. Set to make his UFC debut, Evan Dunham, born in Eugene, Oregon, now fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, working with the members of Extreme Couture, Team Megaton, and Sean Topkins. He takes this fight on late notice. He puts his unbeaten record on the line tonight against the Swede. Well, he, he certainly comes from an excellent training camp. He's got Sean Tompkins, Extreme Couture, you know, uh, and he's a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brown belt. So, you know, he's got good striking training, good wrestling training, good Jiu-Jitsu. Obviously, this is UFC Octagon, so we don't know that much about him, but he does have a 7-0 record in mixed martial arts, which is very impressive, and uh, especially for uh, uh, a young career like this guy has right now. He went to a decision in his first professional fight, has not been forced to go to decision since, Joe. Five of his seven wins have come by submission, and uh, coming in, one would think he wants to take the fight to the ground because that is what he's known best for. That is what he is best at, but honestly, uh, Per Eklund is very good on the ground as well, so it's a good place for both these guys. Evan Dunham, 27 years old, always training, always in shape, earned a bachelor's degree in sociology, minored in business at the University of Oregon, and now it's Las Vegas in which he calls home. Dunham set to make his Octagon debut. Eklund has been angry, intense, and focused all week long. I saw him on Thursday, Joe, working out, and I said, how's your weight? He goes, I'm 156. 156 two days before the weigh-in, or a day and a half before the weigh-in, in excellent condition, truly wanting to put on a show tonight. I like that because that's a guy who doesn't have to cut that much weight. I think when guys cut a lot of weight and dehydrate themselves, they, they do have an advantage in that they're larger than their opponent, but they also have a disadvantage in the fact that they severely weaken their body to get to that place. Per Eklund coming in at a, a light weight like that, I think that's excellent, especially for him. He's a very skillful guy. He's an excellent submissions and one of the toughest guys in the world with a peace tattoo on him. Team Quest was once what he called home for his training, but he and his peace tattoo spent this entire training camp at home in Sweden. And he said he brought in training partner, Joe Warren from Team Quest to help him out for a couple of weeks with his wrestling. Man, he beat me up, but he made me better for it. Yeah, well, he's gonna need that wrestling tonight. Evan Dunham coming out of Extreme Couture. You know he's gotta have good wrestling and good takedown defense as well. Per Eklund does have an advantage in the fact that he's fought twice already in the octagon, and especially coming off the uh, excellent win over Sammy Schiavo, he's got some uh, good momentum on his side. Very popular in Sweden, looking for his second win in the UFC tonight. Per Eklund, Evan Dunham. Our tale of the tape for this lightweight fight is brought to you by Bud Light, with just the right taste that never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. 28-year-old Swede against 27-year-old American. Everything else, pretty close in the weight and the height, but Eklund has a two-inch reach advantage. With the official introductions, once again, here's Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC a lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. A freestyle fighter holding a professional record of seven wins with no losses. He stands five feet ten inches tall, weighing in at 154 pounds, 11 stone. Fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada, USA, Evan Dunham. And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a boxer and jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of 15 wins, three losses, and one no contest. He stands five feet, 10 inches tall, weighing in at 155 pounds, 11 stone, fighting out of Stockholm, Sweden, Per Eklund! 
And when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Mark Goddard. Mark Goddard will be our referee. The beautiful Edith. Ariani and Logan all here in London tonight, O2 Arena. Great to be back here in the UK. Pair Eklund back inside the octagon. You ready? You ready? Let's do this. Dunham, the southpaw in the red trunks. Pair Eklund, traditional stance in the black trunks. Oh, he can make left hand. Dunham got a guillotine. Dunham looking to finish this fight quickly. He's got full guard. If it's not working, look to stand up. Per Eklund could be in serious trouble here. It's early in the fight. Dunham has all of his strength. He's out. He got out. He took an elbow on the way out. But a great job done by Per Eklund just to get out of that trouble. Dunham pushes him away. Eklund mows him right back down. Eklund staying on top of him. He's here in half guard. Dunham caught him with a big punch. Dunham Shut using that a bit, but Eklund is right back in this fight. Now he wants to pull guard. Per Eklund attacking. He has won five of his last six fights, seven of those wins in his career by submission. 15 wins for Per Eklund overall. Per Eklund not afraid to fight off of his back. He does have a very active and aggressive guard. He was talking about immediately, look at that, immediately pulls for an arm bar. He was talking about it at his home in Sweden in his gym. He said, some guys don't want to mess because I go 120% all the time in training with my jiu-jitsu good kick. And again. Keep them shots high or low. Mark Goddard warns of the low kicks. Good right hand by Eklund. Dunham looking to use that jab. Eklund changing levels. Got to be careful on the way out, though. He almost got tagged there. Dunham got his respect early. Eklund happy to sit here and exchange now. Very impressive. Joe, oh. take a look at our fight replay brought to you by the only motorcycles worthy of being in the octagon, Harley Davidson. And here he shows that Sean Tompkins training. Look at that straight left, and Eklund goes down head first. Let's take a look at it again. Just straight down the pipe. Jumps all over him afterwards, and here it is again. He takes a punch, counters, and Eklund goes down like he got shot. He caught him right at the beginning of the fight with a big punch, and then he ends it. Good job by the referee, because you see, you see Eklund is still, tr he's trying to fight still, but his arms go limp at his sides. He definitely was defenseless. I think it was an excellent stoppage, and a really awesome performance by, by Mr. Dunham. They're going to continue to check on Per Eklund. Bruce Buffer has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Mark Goddard has called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 14 seconds of the very first round, declaring the winner by knockout, Evan Dunham. 2-14 is all it took for Dunham to remain unbeaten and a victor in the UFC. Here's Joe. All right, I'm here with, uh, I'm here with Evan Dunham. Evan, got it? Here we go. All right, I'm here with Evan Dunham. First of all, Evan, congratulations on your victory. Welcome to the UFC. Beautiful victory over a very experienced pair of Eklund. And if you take a look at it on the big screen, you, you countered, you took a punch, and you countered with this beautiful straight left. Yeah, uh, I've been working on that a lot. My coach, Sean Tompkins, and Ben Baxter have been helping me a lot. He said, all he's going to have is that lead hook, and he's open for that straight right. So that's, that's what you see right there. What you see indeed. You delivered it. Awesome performance. Congratulations. We look forward to seeing you again. Evan Dunham, ladies and gentlemen. 
Evan Dunham, a winner tonight by knockout in the very first round. Oh, a great debut earlier tonight for Evan Dunham. 0-2.